we are so used to, you know, sit down in a room and hop onto a Zoom call or a Google Meet and talk to these people who are our potential users or existing users. But in reality, a lot of the opportunities are human to human interactions. If you think about how to do a business, sometimes you just gotta walk up to this person and talk to them about what kind of things you're looking to solve, trying to understand their problems before showing them a product, uh, try to win their trust in the first 10 seconds, and then take the conversation further to explore the problem. This is not how we learn at school. This is not how we learn in big companies because at school and at, in a company, oftentimes you're, you're in a very like perfect established setup because we oftentimes don't need a lot of street smartness in order to get customers because if you're working in a big company or if you're working in a startup already or if you're working on some projects at university these opportunities are already given um, to you at the end of the day if you want to do, if you wanted to sell your product you're selling it to a person you're not just selling it to either a, a small or medium business or an enterprise you're selling to a person can you win trust from this person can you uh, click well with this person does this person even like you right that's at the core of doing the business and actually from this side, I learned a ton from my co-founder. Hey everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this is the second week of Antler incubation program. Uh, we have finished most of the, the training part. And for the next eight to nine weeks, we are going to focus on building the product. A huge part of this program's incubation uh, learning for me is that we should learn to sell first and build later. And I want to expand a little bit more on my personal learning on this. A big change on me is that I previously was a strong believer that uh, you should always just build and let people test it and iterate. This is the classic way of how like a lot of uh, people who are technical, people who are in the product side of things tend to do because at the end of the day, we, we want to show our users how our product lo really look like and if they like it or not, right? But in reality, a lot of times for people who are trained to be a product manager, who are trained to be an engineer, we are so used to, you know, sit down in a room and hop onto a Zoom call or a Google Meet and talk to these people who are our potential users or existing users. But in reality, a lot of the opportunities are human to human interactions. If you think about how to do a business, sometimes you just gotta walk up to this person and talk to them about what kind of things you're looking to solve, trying to understand their problems before showing them a product, uh, try to win their trust in the first 10 seconds, and then take the conversation further to explore the problem. This is not how we learn at school. This is not how we learn in big companies because at school and at, in a company, oftentimes you're, you're in a very like perfect established setup because we oftentimes don't need a lot of street smartness in order to get customers because if you're working in a big company or if you're working in a, in a startup already or if you're working on some projects at university these opportunities are already given to you right like for example if you if you work at say uh, products at instagram you already have maybe two three billion users if you work at google cloud you already have so many enterprise customers out there so the first example is B2C, right? The second example is B2B. You don't really get to practice, you know, how do you onboard the first customer from nothing? And I would say there are a few ways to get these first set of customers. You either have a lot of personal network, you have the domain expertise, you, you have worked in this industry for a long time, you just know these people, that's great. Hop on a call and just talk to them. Or, you know, uh, you, you're just really passionate about this industry, you go out there and uh, talk to these people. Uh, maybe you have some personal network, that would be perfect. If you don't, then it's a challenge, right? So I would say a lot of startups actually face this kind of problems because not everybody who are building startups are the ones who know everybody in the industry they want to build. So in order to do that, remember earlier I said, try to sell first and build later. What I really mean by that is, you know, sometimes we just got to like forget about what we learn at these big companies at schools or universities where opportunities are given to you. We might just want to, you know, just like back in the days when you were doing sales, just go into these businesses and especially for SMBs, right? Go into these businesses and say hi with a big smile to these people, to these owners of these smaller businesses, and then just have a genuine conversation with them. Sometimes you'll be surprised because maybe in the day-to-day -day setup, their job is to talk to their customers and there's not much like extra conversation going on there. Like let's say take grocery stores as an example. These grocery stores, you walk in, most of the time people want say, um, get a cup of coffee or get some chewing gum, cigarettes, snacks, whatever. Their job is just to scan that barcode and then 
boom, deal is done. But perhaps, you know, like these people, they also feel bored day to day, right? So when there are like two couple people who walk up to them and be like, we introduce ourselves, here's what we're going to do, we want to understand a bit better about your problems, they're very willing to talk. And in fact, because uh, I've been exploring a lot with SMBs recently, not necessarily in the, the example I was talking about, but in some other areas that we're currently exploring at Antler, what I realized that I just walk into these uh, SMB stores, talk to these homeowners, and uh, actually a lot of them, probably they own 99% of their business. So they're the decision maker. It's very different from, you know, how you sell to a big company where you need these um, network in order to break into these conversations, schedule meetings very properly with them. And eventually they might not be the decision maker because um, they might need to have an approval from their VPs, from people who are managing their budget. For these SMBs, these owners are the final decision maker, right? So you walk up to them and you show them your genuineness. Maybe they, they see you as uh, as the younger self of them back then. Maybe they see you as, to give an example, we walked in this uh, small business and I think it's a family business. The man was uh, talking to us. Uh, later on, his wife also talked to us and then they just mentioned that, they mentioned about their, their kid who are going to school, who's currently a teenager. So yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe you know, they, they, they thought that when they saw these two young people in their business, they feel like, oh, maybe maybe this is how my son would look like in uh, in a few years. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we shared a lot of interpersonal um, empathy with each other, and that was that was really good. Because at the end of the day, if you wanted to, if you wanted to sell your product, you're selling it to a person. You're not just selling it to either an, a small or medium business or an enterprise. You're selling to a person. Can you win trust from this person? Can you uh, click well with this person? Does this person even like you? Right. That's at the core of doing the business. And actually, from this side, I learned a ton from my co-founder. He showed me quite a lot of things that I never experienced before. Like, for example, just walk into some of these SMBs and, and talk to them or just maybe cold call to them. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it opened up a pretty new world for me. Of course, I can talk to people. I'm happy to talk to them. But I probably because of my trainings, because of my background, I it seems like I'm a little bit more reserved in, in this kind of improvising environment. Because say, say, for example, if you're working at Google, if you're working at some of these banks, if you're working at like a large enterprise business, you are often expected to be very professional all the time. But 90% of those world business are not big enterprises. They are smaller or medium businesses. And these people, if you are targeting them as a potential customer, sometimes it's not the best way to sell if you are too professional. You need to get close to them you need to you know pop up to them and suggest that hey here here's how we can help you man like how do you how do you think about that how do you feel about it just to get these kind of natural conversation going and then you know how like when we we're building products we we're trained to be you got to go do user research right but for user research it's not always a share screen scenario it's not always a face-to-face -face scenario when you are in a company but in these smbs it is going to be a business chat it is going to be a friendly conversation to break the ice i recommend all founders to actually give it a shot because you might be surprised sometimes human relationship is often the things that we ignore running a startup of course, depends on who you sell, but I would say a majority of the people would, would need to sell to these other businesses or individual consumers. Just go talk to them. Don't hold back. Be nice. Be genuine. Uh, walk up to them. Don't be afraid. So this is my learning from the second week of Antler Incubation. I hope this is helpful, and I'll continue to take diaries in this video format to record the, the next uh, 8 to 10 weeks. So yeah, peace. Thank you very much.